your life growing up during the Depression? During the Depression, oh my goodness. I went to school, to a Catholic school in the, during the Depression, and uh, there was no shortage of anything in the school. They had heat in the winter. So I don't remember anything bad about the Depression, except that you didn't have a lot of cash yourself as a child. I, mean, I don't know if you would have. And you heard a lot. You read it in the paper that showed families that were going hungry and didn't have money. So that was sort of uh, depressing as a child when you saw that. in the uh, High Park, Massachusetts, which is part of Boston. And uh, I went, was born there, went to grammar school there, St. Rayfield's, then went to High Park High School, and uh, eventually went to Radcliffe College. There was a gap in between there. And what was your family like? Uh, well, we had uh, a double family, and you know, my father had, my mother died young, so uh, he got remarried and married a woman that we were not too crazy about, and uh, she had three children. The children were okay, and then between them, they had uh, four children. One of them died, so there were a lot of people in the house, but it was a fairly good-sized house, so that wasn't a problem. So where did your parents come from? Uh, my mother came from uh, the Aran Islands in Ireland. <clears throat> and uh, she came over here when she was in her 20s and married my father, who was uh, an American, but he was of uh, Italian background. And I think the people in Ireland, when I went back to visit them years later, that's how they recognized me. Or, they knew who I was because I said, my mother lived here, she's from Ireland, and uh, she died, but she, she married an Italian before she died. And uh, so then they instantly knew because the people in Ireland kept track of the people in Boston. <laughs> and there's a lot of correspondence going on, I guess. Yeah, that was Boston, Massachusetts. And a nice city, fairly developed, fairly intellectual, fairly academic. Um, and then during that period, my father was lucky enough, even though there was a depression, to have a, a home at the beach, Nantasket Beach, which was wonderful. It was a real house with four or five bedrooms. And uh, so we spent our summers at Nantasket Beach until the depression hit real bad, and then he had to sell it or give it up or something. So then we didn't have the beach, and we missed it very much. And uh, then life went on, and uh, eventually we continued with our education. And then I joined the services because the war broke out. And then after the war was over, uh, <clears throat> the government said, if you were in the service, we will send you to college or, or edu education, whatever you want. So I took advantage of it and I went to Radcliffe College. And uh, that was it. And just graduated in four years and did a little traveling around, then got involved in an, another military venture. What, what was it then? We were in some other, <laughs> doing something else, the government was. So I went back as a lieutenant and then eventually got out when I met my husband to be. So how did you meet your husband? Yeah, in the service. Um, actually, we were in the mess hall, the dining room, and I was eating with my friends. And one of my male friends came up to me and he said, oh, Betty, you know, my cousin is here. How about if I introduce him? I said, oh, okay, okay, bring him over. So he introduced me to John. Well, later on, I found out he wasn't his cousin at all. It was just a big <laughs> trick. <laughs> and uh, so then we started dating up at Fort Devons, Massachusetts. And then from there, from one thing to another, and then she got married, had four nice children. What was it like to be a woman in the Army at that time? 
you know, it, it wasn't bad. It was good. Uh, some women may have claimed that it was bad. Some women didn't like it once they got in. But I thought it was terrific, including the, you know, gymnastics and the marching and all that. I thought that was terrific. I didn't mind it. And then, of course, you had a wonderful opportunity to travel. I ended up in New Guinea, and I thought that was marvelous in the jungles. And then the Philippines was very interesting. And then eventually came home and then ended up going to college. Because they said, if you're in the army, you have so many years, you can go to college. And then what was it like to be a woman at Radcliffe? Oh, it was delightful. <laughs> it really was. Uh, you know, you think when you hear of Radcliffe and Wellesley and all that, that it might be very snobbish. Well, there may have been a certain amount of that, but not a lot that I saw. And it was wonderful to go to Harvard and walk over maybe a quarter of a mile to Harvard and, um, well, just to be in the Harvard environments. And you felt you were really getting a good education. I, I always felt that. felt lucky to be there. Uh, and then eventually uh, graduated the four years. And all my sisters were at my graduation. Aunt, you know, Aunt Margaret, Aunt Agnes, Aunt Mimi. Okay, that's, that's it. No, that's enough right there, anyhow. <laughs> so what decisions did you make in your life that really shaped who you are today? Oh, well, I think to join the service, because that was a big jump. Well, I think actually it all began leaving home because when the war broke out, Washington needed lots of you know, secretaries and all that uh, typists. So I thought, oh, that's a good deal. I can go to Washington. I thought it was terrific. So I went to Washington. I guess that was the big deal. If I made that move, I could do all the others. But it wasn't the big move. But then I guess joining the service was the big one. But it wasn't the scary one, you know. So I remember my Aunt Mary saying, oh, you're going to go to Europe? You know, she did it with a British, you know, with a brogue. You're going to be going to Europe? And you're going to get killed over there, <laughs> yeah. Because in World uh, World War One, a lot of young people went to Europe and got killed in World War One. Well, they did in World War Two, but uh, I I knew she was overly excited, and so I went anyhow, and ended up at uh, in a very dangerous place, Daytona Beach, Florida, in, living in a hotel. <laughs> so it wasn't bad. And then eventually went to New Guinea, which was terrific in the Philippines. What was your position in the Army? Well, I was uh, mostly, I was a secretary to the commanding general of these forces in New Guinea. That was one of the jobs. And other times I'd be a secretary of somebody else, but that was the big one. Um, and so, Sean and I are getting married, you know. Yeah, so oh, I <laughs> presumed, <laughs> I presumed so. Uh -huh. um, so what advice do you have for us? Oh, just be happy. Yeah, really, the, you know, there'll be bumps along the road. But just take them and be and do as much as you can and then don't worry about it. You know, you, you just keep going. Uh, I don't know, being sick, you just do the best you can with everything. If, if you run out of money, which I don't think you will, but um, you try your best. And don't get too excited about it. And a lot of things are not as important as they seem. If you have children, that's important. Uh, if your house burns down, that's not important. And if your car gets cracked up by your son or something, that's not important either. And it depends upon what you emphasize in your life. That's how I felt. And uh, so, that's how my family was brought up. They didn't get uh, overly motherly attention, not too much. So they had to sort of take care of them. No, they didn't take care of themselves too much. But they knew we were, the parents were always there. But they had a free hand, more or less, to do what they wanted. So do you. I'm sure you do too. <laughs> strive for uh, independence. Strive for intellectualism read books, 
avoid <laughs> ignorant people. <laughs> That's not kind, but travel. Enjoy what you see. Enjoy artwork. A lot of people never go to a museum. Um, they have a good museum here. I used to be a docent to have it. You know, just take advantage of the intellectual part of life. If you enjoy it, if you don't enjoy it, well, don't worry about it, do what you like. Yeah, and then go swimming, <laughs> go for walks. <laughs> so, I'm all through, all righty. <laughs> Let's go in and have some eggs. <laughs>